Okay, it's October, and uh, we're getting close to the end of the year, which is always a busy time for accountants. So I want to talk about a report you can use now that will help make your life a little bit easier when it comes time to do 1099s. That report is the 1099 Vendor Report. And if we go to the Reports and Forms menu and Accounts Payable, up here at or near the top of the list, you will see 1099 Vendor Report. So I'm going to double-click on that to run it. And it automatically comes up for the whole year. And so here we can see each vendor that is set to receive a 1099 and all the transactions they have in here for the year and tells us whether or not the limit has been met for the year. So if it's no, then it would not print a 1099 for that vendor. And uh, what you want to do right now is you're trying to make sure that you've got all your information pulled together. So if you click on the Columns button, you can add a column for the address and a column for the tax ID number and you could if you wanted those to be together you could use the move up button to rearrange that you can rearrange all the columns that way we'll click OK and we can pretty easily see that we're missing tax ID numbers for these two vendors um, so that brings up another thing that you may want to go back to the columns and add telephone number so when you're looking at this report you've got a really easy way to um, you know to get a hold of people and since this report is getting kind of wide uh, you may also want to know that you can change how things are grouped into columns so if you wanted the address to be below a vendor name you just uncheck that column break and now you can see over here that all of those things are going to be in column one and then tax ID starts the next column so you click OK It'll make the report a little bit narrower but just arrange things however uh, is convenient for you so now as you start to look over the list, uh, you can figure out who, who has an address, who has a tax ID, you know, uh, what if you've got all your information pulled together, ready to go. But also if, um, if you think that a vendor should have more payments than you're seeing on here, then you can go back to the main Sage 50 window, go to the maintain menu, down to default information, and then vendors. And then the last tab over here on the right is 1099 settings. And here you can go through every account in your chart of accounts. And the default setting for each one is, is that it will appear on either the 1099 interest box 1 or the miscellaneous box 7, depending on which one you're, you're printing. But you can go through and choose a specific or you know, a different box, or you can choose none. So if you're not seeing things showing up on your 1099 vendor report, it's possible you may have excluded certain GL accounts from 1099 totals. Um, so you can check those and then go back and look at your report to see if that makes any changes. Um, the other possibility is maybe you don't see a vendor at all that you believe should be on there. So then you want to go to the maintain menu and go to vendors. Then you can find that vendor in the list. And maybe we want to look at Abney and Sun Contractors. And we can see over here that their 1099 type is set to none. So you could change that to independent contractor, which means that they're going to be included on a 1099 miscellaneous. I know it's not the best wording, but that's what that means. So you could save that change. And then you can go back to your report. And then that vendor should show up on there. So that's the 1099 Vendor Report in Sage 50 U.S. Edition. If you go through those steps now, that will help make your year-end a lot easier if you have to issue a lot of 1099s.